right now on 5 on your side at 10. Chilly change when it finally feels like autumn and what that transition brings for the middle of this week. Plus, Facebook Marketplace. It can have more than mishaps. The I-Team explains the dangers and how to protect both buyers and sellers. But first tonight, a bill of rights for the homeless. Today, one in five of our school children is unhoused or is housing insecure. Shelters are at their max. The City Hall homeless encampment keeps growing. The plan to put a roof over their heads. We start tonight with breaking news. Right now, the City of St. Louis telling those living in a growing tent community outside of City Hall to move on. Good evening, I'm Mike Bush. And I'm Ann Alder. Just got this word in. This comes on the same day several City Board of Aldermen pledged to create more space for the homeless. Five on your side's Laura Barczewski is live near the encampment with the latest. Laura. Mike and Ann, when we first got here to the tent encampment in front of City Hall tonight, Several people told us they had no idea about the city's plans to ask them to move on. They were even suspicious of about why we were here just looking into the issue. Then later on, as the night progressed, we went over to the other side of the encampment and talked with a couple of men who said they were notified about the ask for them to keep moving. It's, it's ridiculous. Um, there's no words for it, honestly. I can't, I can't describe the feeling. People do what they got to do to make it out of here. And hey, I'm happy for them. But as for me and my family, we'll fight to the end. I mean, I don't have anywhere else to go. We received this information from a city spokesperson saying they are enforcing the park curfew, which does not allow people to be in city parks or areas past 10 o'clock. They say over the last few weeks, there have been roughly 50 police calls for service, 33 EMS calls for services, overdoses, seizures, and other medical emergencies and fighting against amongst the tenants. There's been increasing calls from city employees who say they're being harassed at work and drug paraphernalia has been found on site. This is happening on the same day. Members of the Board of Aldermen pledged to help the unhoused with the unhoused Bill of Rights and several of them are actually here right now. It's important that we remove barriers to their existence, which is why we are decriminalizing activities like panhandling and loitering and laying the foundation for safe, camp, for safe camping areas, designated spaces for tents that will have mobile showers, toilets, and hand washing stations. The city says the Department of Human Services has conducted outreach at the site at least 35 times over the past 65 days in an effort to connect the people with permanent housing and other services. More than a dozen apparently have accepted those resources that have been offered so far. That's all according to the city. They say everyone here will be offered shelter again tonight. They say they have space available. While shelters tell us earlier they don't have any room like St. Peter and Paul homeless shelter in Soulard. Now, according to some of the other tenants, tenants here at the tent encampment, this is apparently the third or fourth time they've been actually asked to leave. And the other times when 10 p.m. rolled around, nobody came to ask them to leave. And this notice all comes ahead of the visit of top government leaders coming here to discuss the 2024 Democratic National Convention. We haven't seen a whole lot of movement behind me as far as uh, asking people to leave, but we have seen, like I said, city officials showing up. Some of them I've heard have pledged their support for the people who are staying here. Reporting live in downtown, Laura Barczewski, five on your side. Tonight, Ferguson police are investigating a deadly shooting outside of a fast food restaurant. A man was found shot inside a car outside the church's Texas chicken on New Halls Ferry Road just after three o'clock this afternoon. He later died at the hospital. Investigators are asking for the public's help in solving this crime. And if you have information, please call Crime Stoppers. The phone number 866-371-TIPS. Tonight, police in Hazelwood are asking for the public's help in solving a deadly shooting at a gas station. An 18-year-old man was killed when several dozen gunshots rang out a quick trip on Lindbergh just north of 270. Our Robert Townsend has reaction. Hazelwood police say a fight between two groups of teenagers first broke out at this QT gas station around 1030 Saturday night. Moments later, lots of gunshots ripped across the air. Sounded like somebody emptied a magazine clip. 
I'd never heard anything like it before. The shooting happened near Karen Condon's home. Condon snapped cell phone pictures of this car. Its two doors were wide open. Police say they found a wounded 18-year-old Charles Corbin the fourth in the vehicle next to a gas pump. I was a little freaked out at the time. Officers performed CPR on Corbin, but he later died at a hospital. Another person was hurt and is expected to recover. That was incredibly sad. I mean, that kid was just 18 years old. That was somebody's son and somebody's brother. Absolutely horrifying. That's crazy. Right now, police have not released any more information about the fight or shooting that's rattled neighbors and customers. You hear about shootings all over lately, so. You know, so it's a matter of time before it starts getting pretty close home. So it's very alarming, and I come to this quick trip a lot. So, of course, now I'm thinking, like, should I go to a different gas station? Now, the shooting happened in St. Louis Councilwoman Shalonda Webb's 4th District. In a statement, the 4th District Councilwoman says, quote, there are no words I can say that will comfort the mother and family through this devastation. Webb also says we have to address guns in the hands of young people and we have to hold those accountable who commit crime. Hazelwood police are asking anyone with any information to call them. Live in Hazelwood, Robert Townsend, five on your side. At least two buildings are destroyed after a fire just steps away from the DuPo Police Department. The fire broke out this afternoon off Lindemann Avenue and 3rd Street. Tonight, power is still out in that immediate area. No word on a cause or if anyone was hurt. Tonight, Mayor Shara Jones is responding after a third detainee death since August at the St. Louis City Justice Center. Jawan Carter died early Saturday morning after suffering a medical emergency. Taryn Smith died while in custody on September 1st. Back on August 20th, Carlton Bernard died at the CJC two days before a violent outbreak that injured a corrections officer. In a statement, Mayor Jones says public health and public safety are intrinsically connected and we must ensure that our services are responsive to the underlying needs of those in the city's care. The city is currently seeking a new health care provider for the facility. The mayor is calling for the creation of new positions in the Department of Health to oversee medical operations at the jail. Tonight, local civil rights leaders claim a noose was hung from a tree not far from the GM plant in Wentzville. The NAACP of St. Louis County provided this picture and say striking workers reported it to the FBI. The group's president calls it concerning and questions the claim that it's a rope swing for children. He's waiting for the outcome of the investigation. We have enough issues going on in our world where we don't need to take on any new divisive racist or anti-Semitism acts. We're not looking for these things to happen. We hope that they would cease totally. So if they find out there's nothing there, good. We're happy to know that. We've reached out to the FBI, which says it cannot confirm or deny an investigation. New charges tonight against a former police officer in the Metro East. Justin Gaither pleaded not guilty today to federal civil rights charges. The former officer with Washington Park is accused of assaulting a handcuffed man. The indictment says the man did not pose a threat. Back in April, St. Clair County prosecutors charged Gaither with the assault of a teen with intellectual disabilities. Prosecutors say he hit the 19-year-old in the face and used a stun gun. A former Illinois state trooper who killed two girls in a fiery crash is now trying to get his license back. The crash happened in November 2007 on I-64 near Scott Air Force Base. Matt Mitchell was driving 126 miles an hour and using his police laptop when he slammed head-on into a car. 18-year-old Jessica Yule and her 13-year-old sister Kelly were killed. It was Mitchell's eighth crash. The girl's mother wants to make sure it was his last crash. No life is worth losing over something that's preventable like this. I don't want anybody else to have to go through what their dad and I and their brother and sister have had to go through, and their friends and family. We suffer, you know, every day. We miss them every day. There's a huge hole. Mitchell got his license revoked as part of a plea deal. He also served 30 months probation. A hearing is scheduled for November 1st. Mitchell is expected to present an alcohol use and mental health evaluation. The prisoner who was able to walk out of Mercy South Hospital right here last month now faces new charges for that escape. Prosecutors have also charged Tommy Boyd with unlawful possession of a firearm and stealing. Boyd had been serving time at a prison in Potosi for child sex charges when he got past his guards while being treated at the hospital. 
The nearly day-long manhunt ended at the Deerberg store in Shrewsbury. A former Lyft driver will be sentenced tomorrow for the kidnapping and rape of a woman who called for a ride home from a bachelorette party. Larry Donald Ward pleaded guilty today. In 2019, he picked up a woman from the Tin Roof Bar in downtown St. Louis. Prosecutors say Ward turned off his rideshare location and assaulted the victim in the back seat while she was intoxicated. If you have an outstanding parking ticket in the city of St. Louis, you're getting a break. Today, the treasurer's office announced parking ticket amnesty. From now until the end of the year, parkers who have tickets that doubled or tripled because they weren't paid on time will only have to pay the original fine for each ticket. This includes unpaid tickets from years ago. The St. Louis treasurer hopes this will get more people to pay their fines while giving them a break. We actually don't like giving out tickets, I'll say that. Costs are up. We want to make sure we're giving everyone in the city an opportunity um, to reduce their financial burden in any way that we can. Those tickets can be paid online through the end of the year. If you don't take advantage of the amnesty period, new fees will be added starting in January. For the third time in three months, a billion dollar jackpot is up for grabs. The winning numbers for tonight's Powerball drawing were just announced. They are 12, 26, 27, 43, 47, and the Powerball, 5.